Hey guys, what's up? We're going to continue where we left off last video. We're going to take care of this plug here. But first, I'm actually going to show you guys a really new tool. Uh, well, not new to Maya, but new to you guys. Um, so, as you guys may have noticed earlier, if you use the smooth tool, that adds divisions. Uh, like I briefly touched on this earlier, but if you don't know, now you know. In order to use the smooth tool, it adds divisions while also relaxing the object at the same time of adding that, uh, that geometry. But if we take that same tool, or not the same tool, uh, if we take the tool next to it that has almost the exact same symbol, uh, it's called res uh, reduce. And what that does is it reduces the amount of geometry on the polygon or on the object. So, as you can see here, we have quite the mess of wires going on with a lot of geometry that's just very unnecessary. If we removed a lot of this geometry, it wouldn't honestly change the silhouette of this. And it's not that big of a deal if we go ahead and fix a few things. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use this reduce tool. And you can go ahead and see that it's doing it by a percentage. And if we amp up that percentage, it will begin to take more and more and more geometry until it starts to damage the objects themselves. So we're just going to back it off a little bit. 68% seems to be doing OK. And now we're going to go ahead and take care of these bands that weren't messed with earlier. Oh, we need to back it up a little bit. There we go, around 61. So the only thing that I notice about these is that there's a lot of unnecessary geometry that we're probably going to remove by hand because the the uh, reduce tool isn't doing it from what we saw. And what I'm doing right now is uh, selecting every other edge, and that's pretty much how you want to delete geometry by hand when you're doing this is you want to select every other edge don't uh, choose any edges that are right next to each other this ensures that you maintain the shape without um, without damaging the silhouette of your object something like that roughly and now I can delete those edges and there we go we've shortened that polygon count on these by a good amount at least 50% and we're just gonna do a little bit more I'm pretty sure it won't affect it Woo! <laughs> guess I'm wrong oh that's why yikes Oh, why are you doing that, bro? All right, now when we delete, there we go. A lot better. So what I did real quick while you guys, uh, while I was off camera, is I went ahead and I started making the line for this guy right here, this plug. And something that we're going to do before that is we're going to go ahead and select these guys right here, just the middles of each of these, to try and balance out the width here and the width over here because it's starting to look a little wonky from what I was doing earlier. And I'll go ahead and fix it a little bit in the middle too to try and even, even everything out. So we're going to use the soft select tool. I forgot we can only do one side at a time. Otherwise it's going to start messing some stuff up. And here we can start flattening these guys out so it doesn't look so thick on these ends. We're gonna do it on this end too. I'm gonna to turn it off so I can actually see what I'm selecting. I'm going to turn that back on and start flattening these ends too. 
one closer together. Now we have a flatter looking chord. Still a decent silhouette for what we were going for. So something that we're also going to have to do is I'm going to I think I'm going to go ahead and try and shrink these guys down just a little bit. Yeah. Just mess around there. And that's just a way of using soft select to edit the overall geometry of what you have. Normally we could separate these again, so hold shift right click and separate and we can now interact with every object as we need to. And from here, we can definitely use the scale tool when we center the pivot and pull this in just a little bit and this guy as well. But with this guy, what we're going to do, because it is an extrusion off this, I'm going to go into vertex mode and shrink those verts instead of those of the entire object. Something like that. This guy's looking pretty square. So I'm going to try and flatten that just a little bit as well as here. It's okay on that bottom curve right there because that's not really going to get seen by the player. And it's again going to be mostly black cord. So it's really just going to be a silhouette rather than high detail. But for now, that's how you use the uh, reduce tool to get rid of extra geometry that is just pretty much unneeded because if we had a square and I used the smooth tool on it but I had smooth turned off which is right hold on there we go we click preserve edges and corners and it won't or I lied. Oh, I didn't hit apply. Hmm. Hold on. Oh, that's the UV. All right, well, I'm not going to waste your guys' time looking for it. There's a way to disable the, the actual smoothing of it. But say we had a lot of excess geometry that wasn't doing anything for us. So I just had this with several segments. Raise that fraction so it's kind of even grid. And if we just had unnecessary geometry, typically reduce properly takes care of that as much as it can without damaging the overall form of the shape see it managed to take every edge besides the holding edges and that's what you want but you don't want to overdo it because you can end up with some uh, errors like this I can easily fix that by going like that but sometimes you'll see what we saw earlier where I deleted this um, but obviously that was by hand um, you can end up with that happening in your actual mesh though so just be careful with that. Uh, the reduce tool is great though for just getting rid of extra geometry that shouldn't, extra loops and stuff like that that is just getting in the way. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on this plug here. I found a decent reference for it. Um, all I did was type in European plug and I managed to find this and I just compared it to our, our current reference and the plug is right here and we're not going to be able to use this as an exact trace but we can get a very high detail uh, shot of what's going on I'm just going to have it rotate uh, to the okay hold on you having fun there Maya um, I'm going to have it rotate to the exact way that this one's facing just to kind of uh, give us a better visual of what's going on. So from what I can see, ours has, it's, it's pretty much the same shape, just elongated. And this edge here, or this shape here, is uh, extruded out 
more and pushed up a little bit more. So we're going to start with what that shape seems to be and then we can add these on top. Um, we're probably not going to like booleans them in or extrude from the original shape with these uh, because of what's going because of how uh, small they're going to be. Uh, it doesn't matter if we kind of just float that geometry right on top of each other instead of making it a uh, single piece. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to start with a square because it seems that this is a very rectangular shape and it also seems that what we have going on with this is simply an edge loop in the middle and then we would grab both edges on either end and expand that outward and from here we can take our entire shape and expand it like this and that looks roughly to be the same shape as that and here I can duplicate it and angle it for you guys so you can get a better visual see it's starting to look roughly like that one there from this angle of course ours is a little bit larger so I'm gonna go ahead and scale that down some and from here we can do what it seems as though they did there. It's really just in a, a little bit elongated. And then from here, they extruded downward. But within their extrusion, it seems as though they slowly do away with this and end up back at a sphere, or not a sphere, uh, at a cube shape. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add uh, this right here, roughly, an, an edge loop right there. And from here, I can begin to grab this edge and pull it in to be more cubic, as well as these faces, just like that. And the way we can smooth this whole thing out is now I'm going to delete this. And that's already not an awful shape, but just to accentuate it a little bit more, we're going to pull that in and give it a nice bevel. One second. I would like this to look a little bit more outward. There we go. And now we can bevel this with a decent fraction, maybe one segment. And that doesn't look half bad. That pinching is something I'm definitely going to want to get rid of. So I'm going to grab these three, not this one. I want this one to stay hard, but the rest of them I'm going to soften. And that leaves us with a nice sort of like that shape. And what we can do as well, if this is a little too harsh, is just start to pull these in. A little bit more than they were pulled in earlier as well as here and that's a nice decent rough shape that we have going on here we wouldn't model this in unless we were doing the high-res version of this to use as a normal map and we'll get into that later but right now we're just going to take the overall shape of this and that's what we're going to use so for this bottom here that's not going to be anything too too complicated all we would do is make an extrusion, pull this guy out, and from this, I am going to, let's see what the easiest way. In my opinion, I think the easiest way to do this would be to add this geometry here, just like that. And from here, I can grab this ring, uh, extrude it, and just like that, because we placed that extra geometry there, it starts to make quite a circular thing right there. Because this is so small, uh, we're not going to make it so circular and waste the geometry here. 